Picking the right kingdom will dramatically shape your experience in Rise of Kingdoms. And with the way that Season of Conquest KVK matchmaking works, there are some very important considerations to talk about. So in this video, we're going to give you five strategies for migration that will help you end up in a great kingdom. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and the addition of the Season of Conquest and the way that KVK matchmaking works now, where you could be in a very young kingdom and get paired against a very old one, will dramatically change the way that you think about migration. But before we give you these five crucial strategies for migration, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is Infinite Galaxy. Let me give you a quick look at Infinite Galaxy. In Infinite Galaxy, you explore the vastness of space to claim territory, battle fierce foes, and yes, take down other players. In this game, you'll be building a collection of flagships. You'll use those to wage war with your collection of war ships, whether it's the sprightly frigate, the mid-sized destroyer, or the massive cruisers. Your fleet will go head-to-head -head against opponents in space combat and in the campaign. But it wouldn't be much of a fleet without its crew. Your crew will help define and customize the way that your team works together as you build out the most amazing space station the galaxy has ever seen. Building up and constructing things from your headquarters to your military center to make sure you're ready for the next encounter. Along the way, you'll do a ton of research, advancing your space station's capabilities in both situations against players and in situations that help you build up and get stronger. What happens next in this game? Well, my friends, it's entirely up to you. I'm about four months into my experience with Infinite Galaxy and still really enjoying it. I assume there'll be migration in this game at some point, but... You could always start in Nebula 13, which is the nebula that I'm in, or if you want, start in a new nebula, and eventually, if they do have migration, you could come and join us. If you want to play this game, use the link in the description to download. Also, it'll be in a pinned comment. Again, I'm really loving this, and if you want, you can join the Smash Squad in Nebula 13. Now, before we get into the nitty-gritty on the five strategies for migration and Rise of Kingdoms, I want to just call attention to passports as being a crucial factor in your ability to go anywhere. Especially if you're free to play, you're going to need to accumulate a ton of individual credits in order to be able to go into your Alliance shop and pick up a whole bunch of these passports, which are not cheap, by the way. Each passport is going to run you 600,000 individual currency. I'll put a chart up on the screen, and I believe that credit is listed on that chart for who created it. The number of passports you're going to need to migrate is, of course, going to depend on your power. The more power you have, the more passports it costs, and that passport cost goes way up very, very quickly once you hit, like, the 50 million power mark. So I'll just point out that you're going to have to get a lot of passports from the shop, and you might, if you're spending... Consider going in and picking up the $5 and $10 bundles in the Super Value Bundles for passports because that is the best value for passports that you'll find if you are spending money. For 5 bucks you get one. For 10 bucks you get two. And then things get way more steep in terms of price. Uh, for 20 bucks you're going to get three. 50 bucks you're going to get four. And then 100 bucks you're going to get five, and you can buy that three times. The most passports you can get in a month from bundles is only 25. So keep that in mind when we talk about these migration strategies, okay? For this reason, I think that everybody should be accumulating passports at all times. It doesn't mean you need to be buying them from the shop. So if you're free to play, I mean, I don't think it makes sense to be spending a bunch of your individual currency in advance of your needing passports in the shop. But just keep in mind that you should be either saving up enough currency so that you could buy the passports if you need them, or if you are spending to consider every month picking up the $5 and the $10 bundle so that you can start to accumulate a bunch of these passports in a value-oriented way. I mean, I've got, what was it, like 90-some passports. I don't intend to use them. I have no plans to use them. Uh, but people generally don't plan to migrate. And I think the group of players that is most focused on should I migrate or not is the group of players that are just making their way into the Season of Conquest for the very first time. They've just finished KVK3. 
They're on their way to their fourth season of KVK. There's all these new commanders that they don't have access to. Their kingdom is, well, really far behind in terms of commanders compared to the other season of Conquest Kingdoms. So let's give the very first strategy here, which is to basically say, I don't want to have anything to do with the season of Conquest. Some number of people say that. Their intention is to go to a very young kingdom repeatedly. So players that follow this first strategy of migrating to a young kingdom repeatedly are going to be going in and they'll, you know, you zoom out, you look at the globe here, it'll give you the options. You're going to these season two off-season kingdoms. There's not that many of them. So you've only got four continents of, of choices here, at least at the time of this recording, right? And you'll go in and you'll look at the kingdoms that are there and you've got to pick which one is going to be really great. I'll point out that there are Imperium requirements here as well. So a kingdom could get locked for bringing in new players over a certain power level if the kingdom becomes too powerful. So you got to be careful if you're going with a big group. This is, of course, less of an issue if you're going as an individual. Now, the advantage of going to young kingdoms, and to do so repeatedly, you're going to play KVK Season 2, you're going to play KVK Season 3, and then you're going to migrate back and do KVK 2 all over again, right? The advantage of this is that you gain strength relative to the other people that you are playing against. I mean, <laughs> you're gaining power and gaining power and gaining power, presumably. And then when you migrate back, you're going to be in a kingdom with people who've not played as long as you, with the exception of the other people who migrate back, which means relative to everybody else, you are getting stronger and stronger. That does mean you need to carry more of the weight in a KVK situation, but some people really like the idea of being kind of the strongest kid on the block. Uh, what I'll say is that you also have access to probably easier Ark of Osiris matches and potentially Osiris League, and you don't ever have to deal with crystal technology, which some number of people just really, really don't like, so they just want to avoid it entirely. So those are the advantages of going to a young kingdom over and over again. And you can work on some commanders, by the way, like Saladin and Alexander the Great and Constantine over and over, building them up and building them up and getting a really set, really great set of commanders for these KVKs, KVK Season 2 and KVK Season 3. The flaws with this strategy of migrating to a young kingdom repeatedly is that in these KVKs, KVK Season 2 and 3, you have 100% dead troops that are just gone forever. In other words, in the Season of Conquest, you get 50% back. That is not the case here, okay? So you're going to be losing 100% of troops that you lose. In addition, you're going to be constantly spending your credits for passports. I mean, it is a lot of credits, especially as you power up and power up and power up. At the lower end of things, it's easy. But once you breach that 50 million power mark, it starts to be prohibitively difficult to be migrating back roughly every 120 days to go back to a KVK Season 2 in the off season, and then boom, fight all the way through KVK Season 3, get to Season of Conquest, and then migrate back again. Keep in mind, by the way, that in KVK Season 2, you cannot obtain or use your Season of Conquest commanders. So any commander that says they're from the Season of Conquest and beyond is going to be unusable, which kind of sucks. So like, Guan is a commander you can't use, and Ramses, and so forth. So one of the biggest issues here with going to a Young Kingdom repeatedly is you're basically never going to work on the Season of Conquest commanders. You'll never get to a point where you have the commanders that you will need if you want to leave this KVK 2 and 3 meta. So it's a fine long-term strategy if you really are just going to keep migrating back. But as soon as you leave, I mean, you're going to be really far behind unless you follow migration strategy number two. Migration strategy number two is to go to a Young Kingdom, KVK Season 2 in the off-season, so leading up to KVK Season 2, with the intention of accumulating boatloads of gold heads. So you basically, you get to KVK Season 4, Season of Conquest, and you say, you know what, I'm going to go backwards, and I'm just going to not spend a single gold head until I get to Season of Conquest, and then boom, I'm going to drop them on the new commanders, whatever's hot, I'm going to build up like a thousand plus gold heads and max a couple commanders. And that is a solid strategy as well. It gives you time to work on your research. It gives you time to accumulate really great gear and get a lot of materials ready so that 
when you get to the Season of Conquest and you're getting a bunch of the currency you need over here, these Season of Conquest coins, these Season coins, you can go in and, and not just pick up some of these accessories right away, but you could potentially craft them right away, right? So that's another strategy you could take. You migrate back to a young kingdom, but you're planning to do it once or twice so that you can accumulate enough stuff to really enter the Season of Conquest with a bang. That is a viable strategy, and I think is pretty reasonable, especially because, like, don't you want to experience the end game stuff at some point, all these new commanders? I mean, the early commanders are cool, but I have to think at some point you're going to want to get to this other stuff. Now, with that said, when you get back into the Season of Conquest, I'd like to present to you the third migration strategy, which is to go to a kingdom that is completely dead. Now, if you wanted to find a dead kingdom, one way you could go about doing this is just kind of looking at kingdoms that are in the off season for the season of conquest. And I'm just picking a random kingdom here, but you go and you view the kingdom, okay? And you would go and you try to see like how much power is there really in the top alliances in the kingdom. The lower the power, perhaps the better the indicator that it, it might be a dead kingdom. You'd go in and you'd look at the alliances and you'd say, okay, well, like 3.8 billion power. That's not a particularly strong alliance. Again, no offense, right? Like, okay, 900 million power. That's like a farm alliance, right? What about over here? Did I just randomly find a potentially dead kingdom? I think I might have 400 million power. Okay, so you see what I'm saying here. Here's the alliance that actually holds... The temple, okay, 9.3 billion power. So not a, not a totally dead kingdom, okay? Not a, not a totally dead kingdom. A young kingdom with people all concentrated in one alliance. But you try to find, like, where where is a truly dead kingdom so that you can get easy, mightiest governor wins. And you use those easy, mightiest governor wins to build up your collection of commanders. And it's not just you know, those commanders that are out of the meta, but it's the newest, greatest, hottest commanders. You've got access to them, and you're building up your collection relatively quickly. The disadvantage of that is that you're unlikely to find uh, a proper Osiris team or potentially even be able to field a great team. Your KVK experience is potentially not going to be amazing in a dead kingdom. You're really going to be depending on your war camp and how good your war camp is and how inclusive they are of your nearly dead kingdom, right? That's why you went there. It's a dead kingdom. Um, so there are definitely some downsides to being in a dead kingdom. I mean, what's the point of accumulating all those commanders if you're not actually able to use them in a meaningful way, right? This brings us to the fourth strategy, which is the exact opposite of going to a dead kingdom and basically saying, heck, if I'm going to be doing Season of Conquest, I want to do Season of Conquest with the biggest, baddest kingdom I can get myself into. And the reason that you'd want to do that is that you don't have to be the one carrying the team. At that point, you've got, as an example, right, like players like me with ridiculous rosters that are going to be looking to max the meta commanders, have the best gear. So you're going to be able to elevate your effectiveness in rallies and garrisons by virtue of the fact that you don't have to be the captain. There are going to be plenty of other people who can do that. And you can focus on whatever you want for your account. You don't need to be the rally leader garrison captain unless you really want to, right? And you, and you work toward doing that. So the advantage of going to an old, large kingdom is that your kingdom will be strong relative to other kingdoms. And that is so important because now in the season of conquest, I mean, there are kingdoms that are less than 100. So kingdom like one through 100 are, are battling against 1,800 kingdoms, right? Which means that you may as well be in a kingdom that's multiple years older and the players there all have really powerful commanders. They've got a lot of really great gear, okay? There's some huge advantages to going to an older kingdom that is large and strong and has the opportunity to potentially shape the way the diplomacy works out and what sort of fight ultimately happens in your KVK anyways. These older kingdoms, by the way, are much more likely to be organized because they've just had so much more time to organize themselves and have more practice battling together in KVKs and working together as a team, okay? In a kingdom like this, like in Kingdom 75, which is my kingdom, you're fighting as a part of the pack rather than like needing to be an individual doing heroics in a dead kingdom. 
It's really, truly the opposite of the Dead Kingdom experience. The big disadvantage of going to a huge kingdom is that, I mean, you're competing now with a large group for Mightiest Governor. So if what you cared about is your individual collection of commanders, obviously the more players in the kingdom, the less sculptures there are to go around. And one thing I, I would have said would be a disadvantage, but is no longer a disadvantage, by the way, uh, is that there's an event called Card King that gives you access to a lot of commanders. For a time, it seemed like this event was not showing up in really old kingdoms, but it's back, baby. In fact, we're going to be streaming this later tonight. Uh, so make sure to throw a like on here and consider subscribing if you haven't already so you don't miss the stream. This evening, we're going to do Card King probably for Leonidas. So you still can get access to a lot of great commanders by going to a large kingdom uh, in part through this event over here, the Legendary Tavern, in part through something like Card King, which is going to still give you access to commanders, right? There's always the Wheel of Fortune as a mechanism to unlock commanders, which is certainly helpful. Now, I think it's pretty obvious what my strategy has been for migration, which is to be in large, older kingdoms that give us access to the newest content as soon as it lands and have access to the latest and greatest commanders as soon as they hit. So I think going to a large, old kingdom is generally a great play. But there is one final option, which is that you could just stay where you are. And as crazy as that sounds, there are some advantages to staying where you are. If I wanted to migrate my main account right now, I would be shredding I basically have to give away all my resources that are open already, which really sucks, by the way. Like, throwing away potentially billions of resources could be a huge issue. Now, if you're in the early game and you're still strapped for resources, this is a non-issue, right? You, you don't have this problem. Um, but not giving up your resources is kind of a big deal for a lot of people. The other thing I'll say is that if you're already in kind of a young kingdom, uh, staying where you are could be advantageous because younger kingdoms are generally very active uh, and potentially more active than their older kingdom counterparts. It really all depends on the kingdom. Again, the disadvantage of staying where you are, especially if you're in a younger kingdom, is that uh, people do not yet have these meta commanders that make a huge difference on the battlefield. I mean, if you don't have Zenobia and your kingdom hasn't gotten a, a mightiest governor for that, that's going to be a huge problem. It's going to be a huge problem for your kingdom. So in the very least, the guidance I would give to kingdoms that are entering into the season of conquest for the very first time is to wait almost the maximum number of times possible that you can put off actually playing the season of conquest so you get access to as many Mightiest Governor cycles as possible. So you can get as many of these meta commanders as possible for your kingdom. Give yourself as much time as possible to work on them so that your kingdom is not as weak relative to other kingdoms that are older established, and are at the same power level. Because the matchmaking is ultimately based on the power of the top 300 players in your kingdom. Now, if you're interested in actually following through on strategy number four, going to an older, powerful kingdom, you're welcome to join the Migration Discord for Kingdom 75, just to get a sense of what I think pretty good looks like for a migration experience. You don't have to come to 75 if you don't want to, but just to get a sense of what it looks like to go to an organized kingdom. Yeah, we have a Discord dedicated to bringing players in, and there's actually over 240 players currently planning to come to Kingdom 75. I don't know how many actually will. We're going to be open for migration in a very small number of days. In fact, what is it, like two, two days from now? We're going to be open for migration. And we're no longer an Imperium kingdom. We fought so hard, we're out of Imperium, which means that if you're under like 60 million power, you're welcome to join Kingdom 75, assuming you think it's a fit for you. So if you wanted to follow that strategy number four, you're welcome to explore the option of coming to Kingdom 75. Link's in the description for that migration discord. And if there are any other migration strategies that we should have considered, then do me a favor and let me know down below in the comments. I'd be eager to see what those are. If this video was helpful, throw a like on here, subscribe so you don't miss another video designed to help you get value and smash your enemies. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom and seriously, like picking the right kingdom just goes such a long way. Good luck.